I think the first thing to say about Rembrandt, apart from the fact that he's probably the greatest etcher that's ever lived, is that he saw etching as an equivalent role to his painting. In other words, they had equal status. Up until that time, it had always been seen as a way of reproducing paintings that were already in existence, or he wanted to make prints to sell and that kind of thing. Whereas Rembrandt had a lot of different roles. He was a great technical innovator, probably the greatest technical innovator that there's ever been. What we now call etching or printmaking now in the etching terms, Rembrandt basically reinvented the whole, the whole technique. Every print that Rembrandt made, he meant as a print. It wasn't just a, a throwaway idea. It was, it was intended and it was a serious thing. So however slight it is, it's not that slight. It always, it's always has a reason and an intended purpose. And even when you get the very elaborate ones, it's absolutely, everything is completely meant. I think within that, um, probably it's important to identify, as this exhibition will show, three main areas of or styles. There's the very um, sketchy style, which is very similar to the drawings. I mean, etching is a wonderful medium because it has this wonderful, slightly scratchy line. That the way it actually technically works is that you get a, you don't get a straight line. Engraving had been the great medium before that, and that's hard, straight lines. And Rembrandt, I think, loved etching because he could get this slightly slightly wobbly line in a way which looked very like a drawing, so that he could actually make etchings that looked very like drawings. And sometimes when you look at them in reproduction, it's quite hard to tell whether they are etchings or, or drawings. Then there's a more worked up idea, somewhere a, a level above that, where he's experimenting cor compositional ideas and seeing whether he can, what I think actually were ideas that weren't very much into the painting, so they were trying compositional schemes, light and shade, um, trying to see, I mean, the great phrase that's always used with Rembrandt is chiaroscura, and of course, with etching, you've got this wonderful ability to get huge ranges from very brilliant light to very dark colour and everything in, in between. And I think all through Rembrandt's career, it was a, a process of extending and expanding that range of contrast of colour, of chiaroscuro, the light, the dark, creating the drama in the scenes. Um, then going finally to perhaps to the third category are these very worked up uh, studies, very often of portraits, and these would be commissioned pieces which had to be very, he couldn't in a sense, was not quite so much room for experiment there, but they have to be very um, tightly constructed and they had to meet a certain standard of finish. Um, I think there was a way in which many of his contemporaries thought, saw him as being rather a bit, a bit too overbold sometimes that he was seen as. I, I mean, there's a lovely story I've read somewhere in this where um, they thought he was kind of a magician and that he was got some secret process and that when he died, um, his process died with him. Um, and in fact, of course, he, he he made it look like magic because of the the genius that he was. But he was just that he was he was finding new things to do with the medium all the time. And he was also in the course of that not just keeping rigid categories, he introduces uh, elements from other, the dry point technique where you burrow straight into the metal plate, or uh, with the engraving, the burin, which creates a very deep straight hole. So he was creating whole masses of lines of different textures and shades and uh, possibilities in a way. It was interesting actually in his lifetime, his reputation internationally, I think Gercino said he was the greatest virtuoso he lived and that's all the way down to Italy, so he was certainly recognised very early on as a, a great figure. And I think most of his contemporaries probably knew him as much for the, the prints as the paintings. The painting and the prints run very much in parallel, so that out of the, well, the hundreds of prints, uh, there's various discussions about how many there are. I've seen 300, 600, I don't think anybody's, I haven't quite done the sums yet. But basically they reflect the range of his subject matter as a painter. So about a th at least a third of those prints are religious subjects, mostly the New Testament, which was his great passion. Uh, about a third were um, genre subjects and subject pictures of various kinds. Uh, then there were whole ranges of figure pictures of peasants and beggars uh, and portraits of his family. Self-portraits obviously is a huge element of it, all of his own family. Uh, and then, of course, unusually too, was the other element there, which I don't think anybody had ever used etching for, which was to make a landscape etchings. Um, and for a period from about 1640 to 
1650, he made, I, I'm guessing, I think it's about 35, 40 of these wonderful landscape prints. I think for a lot of artists, it's a very good medium for experimenting with, for finding new ideas. In a painting, you've got limitations, you're, you, can't, you can't get too many things wrong, you can't, you're, you're a bit constricted by that, whereas in a print, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Or, but the other lovely gift about printmaking, of course, is that you can alter it endlessly and without too much trouble. You can rub it out, burnish it, add things, put other layers on top if you don't like it. And Rembrandt was a, a terrific fiddler, wasn't he, in that way, he's always fiddling away with things. My th feeling is, I've not seen this particularly in books anywhere, my feeling is that he used printmaking as a very strong area to experiment with light and shade. I mean, I think particularly when he was doing those female and male nudes in the 1640s and 50s, that they were terrific vehicles for literally for seeing how he could deepen and darken and get these sculptural contours and so on. And that's always a quality that's admired in the paintings uh, themselves as well. So. In a way, I think one transferred very easily into the other, that he, that skill to build up and make these great massive structures and paint, found, he found an equivalent means for doing this in uh, the prints themselves. I think it's important to say that these are prints taken directly from Rembrandt's original plates and not copies or reworkings or whatever. They are the real, that, that's Rembrandt.